Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to read page 190 to 207 in the one and only Ivan. The dates for this will either be if I, if you have um, me, this will be first hour, 222, and then this will be six hour, 223. But you guys are free to read. I'm, my goal is to post both of the record, the read alouds um, over either over the weekend or by Monday. So you guys can kind of work through them um, at your own pace. And then you'll be able to complete your um, journal entry or response when you're done with both of the recordings. So here we go. Page 190, one more thing. So we left off with um, Ivan. He's got this plan with the paintings. He um, is keeping them from Mac. He's hiding them in knot tag. He pulled out all the stuffing. We're still not really sure what he's going to do with these paintings. So let's see if we can find out more. One more thing. My finger painting has sold for $40 with frame. Mac is happy. He brings me a huge pile of paper and big buckets of paint. Get to work, he says. I paint for Mac during the day and Ruby at night. I nap when I can. But my nighttime picture isn't quite right. It's big, that's for sure. When I place all the pieces of the floor, all the pieces on the floor of my cage side by side, the cement is almost completely covered, but something is still missing. Bob says, I'm crazy. There's Ruby, he says, pointing with his nose. There's the zoo. There are other elephants. What's wrong with it? It needs one more thing, I say. Bob groans. You're being a temperamental artist. What could be missing? I stare at the huge expanse of colors and shapes. I don't know how to explain to Bob that it isn't done yet. I'll just have to wait, I say at last. Something will come to me and then I'll know my painting is finally ready. The seven o'clock show. During the last show of the day, Ruby seems tired. When she stumbles, Mac reaches for the claw stick. I tense, waiting for her to strike back. Ruby doesn't even flinch. She just keeps plodding along, and after a while, Snickers jumps onto her back. 12. I lie in my cage with Bob on my stomach. We are watching Julia do her homework. She doesn't seem to be enjoying it. I can tell because she is sighing more than usual. Again, for the hundredth time, or maybe the thousandth, I wonder what is missing from my painting. And for the hundredth time, or maybe the thousandth, I don't have any answer. Dad, Julie says as George passes by with a mop, can I ask you a question? May I? George corrects. Ask away. Julia glances down at a piece of paper. What's the difference between the word spelled P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L and the one spelled P-R-I-N-C-I-P-L-E? The first one is the head of a school, like Miss Garcia. The second one is a belief that helps you know what's right or wrong. He smiles. For example, it's against my principles to do my daughter's homework for her. Julia groans. If I'm going to be an artist when I grow up, why do I need to know how to spell? With a laugh, George heads off. Poor Julia, I think. Gorillas get by just fine without learning how to spell. All those endless letters, those sticks and circles and zigzags, filling up books and magazines, billboards and candy wrappers. Words. Humans love their words. I leap up. Bob goes flying straight into my pool. A word. You know how I feel about wet feet, Bob yells. He scrambles out of the water, shaking each foot in dismay. I look out my window at the billboard. I can still hear Mac's voice in my head. Come to the exit A, Big Top Mall and Video Arcade, home of the one and only Ivan, Mighty Silverback. I count to 12 and then I count again just to be sure. H. I lay out 16 pieces of poster board, four down, four across, a perfect square. What are you up to? Bob demands. I'm guessing it doesn't involve sleep. It has to do with the billboard. 
that's a sign of mentrosity, particularly since I'm not featured. I grab my bucket of red paint. You're not on the billboard because you're not in the show, I point out. Technically, I don't even live here, Bob says with a sniff. I am, a, I am homeless by choice. I know, I'm just saying. I study the billboard, then I make two flat lines like broom handles. Another fat line connects them. I stand back. What do you think? What is it? No, wait, let me guess. A ladder? Not a ladder, I say, a letter. At least I think that's what they're called. I have to make three more. Bob cuddles up next to Not Tag. Why? He asks, yawning. Because then I'll have a word, a very important word. I dip my fingers into the paint. What word? Bob asks. Home. Bob closes his eyes. That's not so important, he says quietly. Nervous. All day long, I knuckle walk circles around my cage. I'm so nervous, I can't nap. I can't even eat. Well, not very much anyway. I'm ready to show Julia what I've made. It has to be Julia. She's an artist. Surely she'll look, truly look at my painting. She won't notice the smudges and tears. She won't care if the pieces don't quite fit together. Still see past all of that. Surely, Julia will see what I've imagined. I watch Ruby trudge sullenly through the four o'clock show and I wonder, what will happen if I fail? What if I can't make Julia understand? But of course, I know the answer. Nothing, nothing will happen. Ruby will remain the main attraction at the big at the Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade, conveniently located off I-95, with shows at 2, 4, and 7, 365 days a year, year after year after year. Showing Julia. It's time to show my work. The mall is silent except for Thelma the Macaw, who is practicing a new phrase, uh-oh. Julia is finishing her homework. George is sweeping outside. Mac has gone home for the night. I grab Nat Tag and carefully pull out the folded papers. So many paintings, page after page, piece after piece of my giant puzzle. I pound on my glass and Julia glances over. Fingers trembling, I hold up one of my paintings. It's brown and green, a corner piece. Julia smiles. I display another piece and then another and another and another, each one a tiny part of the whole. Julia looks confused, but what is it? She asks. She shrugs. It doesn't matter. It's pretty just as it is. Uh-oh, says Thelma. No, I think. No, it does matter. More paintings. George calls out to Julia. He's done for the night. Grab your backpack, he says, and hurry. It's late. Gotta go, Ivan, Julia says. Julia doesn't understand. I have to find the right pieces. I dig through the pile. They're here somewhere. I know they are. I find one, another one, another. I try to hold four of them up against the glass. Bob, I say, help me, hurry. Bob grabs paintings with his teeth and drags them to me. One by one, I shove pieces through the window crack. They crumple and tear. There are too many pieces. My puzzle is too big. Careful, Ivan, Julia says. Those might be worth millions someday. You never know. She arranges the paintings into a neat stack. I suppose Mac's going to want to sell these in the gift shop. She still doesn't understand. I shove more out of the hole and more and more, all of them, one after another. So Ivan's been painting, has he? George says as he puts on his coat. A lot, says Julia with a laugh, a whole lot. You're not taking all those home with you, are you? George asks. I mean, no offense to Ivan, but they're just blobs. Julia thumbs through the towering stack of paintings. They might not be blobs to Ivan. Let's leave these those by the office, George suggests. Mac, Mac will want to try selling them. Although why 
Why anyone would pay 40 bucks for a finger painting a two-year-old could do, I don't know. I like Ivan's work, Julia says. He puts his feelings into them. He puts his hair into them, George says. Julia waves goodbye. Night, Ivan. Night, Bob. I press my nose against the glass and watch her walk away. All my work, all my planning, wasted. I look at Ruby, sleeping soundly, and suddenly I know she'll never leave the big top mall. She'll be here forever, just like Stella. I can't let Ruby be another one and only. Chest beating. Often when visitors come to see me, they beat their hands against their puny chest, pretending to be me. They pound away soundless as the wet wings of an as the wet wings of a new butterfly. The chest beating of a mad gorilla is not something you ever want to hear, not even if you're wearing earplugs, not even if you're three miles away wearing earplugs. A real chest beating sends the whole jungle running, as if the sky has broken open, as if men with guns are near. And we will stop there on page 207. Bye guys, have a great day.